The JA-37D flies out for Sweden in War Thunder. Let's check it out. The Saab 37 program provided Sweden with a family of versatile multi-role and dedicated role aircraft. They were named Viggen, and the JA-37 was, was the fighter interceptor version of the new plane, which entered service in the early 1970s. The D model was a midlife upgrade program from the 1990s that added additional countermeasures, a new CD-207 computer system, which was a big upgrade, compatibility with ECM equipment, GPS navigation, which again was a big upgrade, and expanded weapons compatibility, including the ability to use the new AIM-120 AMRAAM missile, and you best believe that was a big upgrade. These were all modifications of older airframes rather than newly produced aircraft, and according to different sources, either 35 or 36 of them were upgraded to this new standard. Now, despite the new capabilities, the Viggen was slowly replaced by the new JAS-39 Gripen, and it was eventually withdrawn from active service in 2005. What we have in War Thunder is the JA-37D, a jet fighter in rank 8 of the Swedish air tree with a battle rating of 11.7. This jet gets a ballistics computer that provides a CCIP for its cannons and unguided rockets, along with the EEGS, which is a new feature, and it's especially important since the ammo belts for the plane don't have any tracer rounds. Its radar is the PS-46A. This radar set gets regular search mode, pulse Doppler all aspect, track wall scan, and the ACM boresight targeting mode. It's got a great set of sweep angles, but the scope ranges jump from 30 to 100 kilometers with nothing in between, and that can be a little annoying sometimes, not having a medium range setting. For loadouts, the plane has six stations that can carry a combination of air to air missiles or unguided rocket pods, along with a centerline drop tank. Its infrared air to air missiles are the RB 24J and the RB 74. The 24J is basically an AIM 9J. It's a 20G missile with reasonably good tracking. This will be your go-to weapon while you're grinding upgrades for the plane. The RB-74 is basically an AIM-9L. It provides 30 Gs of pull, all aspect tracking, good range, and it's generally one of the best weapons in the game as of early 2023. The JA-37D also carries the RB-71. This is the Swedish version of the Skyflash missile, which uses semi-active radar homing, has 25 Gs of pull, and reasonable medium-range performance. Coming up from the JA-37C, this is exactly the same weapon as you had before. The flight performance of the D-model Viggen is broadly similar to the C-model. It's got reasonable engine power with good acceleration and maximum speed, but there are some serious caveats to the performance. The first thing to remember is that this is a canard delta. And while it's capable of pulling some insane high-G snap turns, it's going to bleed off airspeed very fast in tight maneuvers. Plus, the Viggen is just a heavy jet, and even with its good engine power, it's going to take a few moments to start regaining lost airspeed after a maneuver. And if you have to snap into another hard maneuver or something in that time, like dodging missiles or whatever, you might suddenly find yourself out of energy just hanging in the air waiting to fall. While this jet is certainly capable of pulling really impressive turns, it's also capable of getting energy trapped surprisingly quickly for a top tier jet. So try to avoid pure vertical maneuvers like half loops. The addition of the drop tank is also a huge plus since the engine is really thirsty with the afterburner on. But I haven't run into any fuel issues with the 37D, again, mostly thanks to the drop tank. One tactic to consider is that on smaller maps, you can fly out with the drop tank, but less than a full fuel load. So that once the tank is ditched, like right at about the time you're probably getting into combat, you're a bit lighter and those energy issues I mentioned a moment ago might not be as pronounced. Or just don't take the drop tank unless it's a larger map. 
Flying the JA-37D out in emissions is very similar to the JA-37C. The main differences are going to be the increased flexibility provided by the RB-74s, the increased countermeasures, the EEGS, and the drop tank. Now the good news is that, as with the C model, this jet is versatile enough to fly out with basically any air combat playstyle. You can use it as a close-up dogfighter, as long as you take care not to get energy trapped, or you can fly it out as more of an interceptor, doing high-speed passes through the battle with all aspect weapons. You can fly right up into the middle into the thickest fighting, or you can skirt the edges looking for flanking opportunity. The addition of the EEGS for the cannon makes getting gun kills significantly easier. But, as with the 37C, the cannon runs out of ammo really quickly, and even with careful aiming, you can run dry pretty fast. You don't get any tracers, so you're relying entirely on your ballistics computer for aiming adjustments, and try to remember that even though it's a huge help, it's not perfectly accurate. Now in terms of ground attack, all you get are some rocket pods with a very low ammo count. Flying this out as close air support can be painful, and even with dropping countermeasures non-stop, you still need to get really close in to use the rockets, and top-tier SPAA is just going to eat you alive more often than not. Now, flying out above ground battles to do fighter sweeps and provide air cover tends to be quite a bit more effective, and the EEGS can actually be a big help in swatting out helicopters that are doing standoff attacks from like 10 kilometers away. Visually, the JA-37D looks almost identical to the JA-37C. Now, it's a pretty slick looking jet, but personally, I find the weird hunched back spine kind of weird sometimes. There's only one custom skin so far, but overall, it's still a pretty good looking aircraft, and the detail on the 3D model and the skins is excellent. Landing is basically the same as the 37C, with all of its unique quirks. You don't have a drag chute, but you get a thrust reverser. It won't be especially difficult, but if you haven't flown the Vigan in a while, I'd strongly suggest a flight test or two to get the feel for the landing again. The cockpit has reasonable visibility, a great moving map display, a useful HUD, and most of the instruments are in good spots. The radar scope is a tad lower than I prefer these days, but overall I'd still give this jet an A- on the cockpit. It's really easy to fly in VR. To close out on the JA-37D. This jet has great agility, an enormous amount of countermeasures, the enhanced envelope gun sight, and top-end air-to-air missiles. However, it's prone to getting energy trapped in prolonged dogfights. Its air-to-ground potential is limited and it really doesn't get enough ammo for the cannon. The final verdict on the JA-37D Vigan is that this is the natural upgrade from the 37C, with features that make it a bit more competitive in the current top-tier meta as of early 2023. If you liked the C model, you're gonna love this thing, and in my opinion, it's worth the grind. Plus, it's a great way to prep for the Gripen. As always, Thanks for watching.